Good morning, everyone. So in this video, something different than what I've normally been doing, and it's pretty much sparked on by the USA ETC group getting together. So essentially, we have picked, I guess, 20 applicants to move forward with and, you know, form a group and practice with each other and get better with each other. And eventually the ETC team will be chosen from the group of people. And so um, I think there's multiple parts when it comes to getting on the team. Obviously, how could you play, chemistry, all that kind of stuff. But Army at the same time, you know, plays a big role. And if you look at something from, we'll say, like Poland, for example, or from what I've seen at least, um, you know, Army matters, but in a sense that they don't, they don't switch armies that much in Poland. Or better said, if you are, I don't know, if you're playing Beastman and you are a really good Beastman player and they decide they don't want Beastman that year, you don't get picked, even if you're the eighth best player. Now, I think they do tend to pick, you know, if you're crushing it with Beastman, they'll take you even if they don't think the army is. I don't think they care that much because I don't think there is technically a top eight army Necessarily, I think there are some armies on this list that you want on your team. But, I mean, people consider the Warriors one of the strongest books, and Germany won without them last year. They just didn't have a player for it. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is, I think they're, you, it's kind of like a, a package deal, player and army. Um, what you don't want, or what I don't want, as an outside, as you know, somebody who's applying for the team is, having these people who make the team because they play really well on, I don't know, ogres. And then we have two ogre players and then somebody has to move off of ogres. Well, that kind of like this, I, I don't, I don't think enough people are, I don't think people are good enough to switch in the short time frame. Most people aren't. Um, there's a few people out there that can do it if they get enough games, but even then, you know, I don't know. I think that you're just missing something there where as opposed to being super practiced on a, on a, on a book, just, I don't know. There's something about it. There's, obviously it makes sense, right? The more practice you are, the better you are. I, I just don't like this idea of switching with one month ago, thinking you're going to be good enough for ETC. You know, sure. If you're a good player, you're probably going to beat the weaker players anyway, but that's not what, you know, that's not the hurdle that America has right now. The hurdle America has is competing with those top teams, the Spains, the Germanys, the Poland, and, and not getting fucking capped by them. Um, and that takes two parts. That obviously takes, well, I guess, the, the, you know, then the question kind of becomes, is it the top-end players or the low-end players that's the problem? And a bit of both, I would say. Um and, you know, we had this problem back when, when I played it, too, is you don't have to have the best player in the world on your team. And this is coming from Jeremy Thomas was talking to me about this. He's like, you just need to not have your worst player get shit on all the time. Like, that's a big part of it. Like, you can't have people getting 30s and 40s every year. Like, you, if you look at some of the top three teams from the last couple of years of ETC, their worst players maybe in the four, maybe you see one person in the forties or something, but it's usually like the fifties or sixties, and that's pretty good. That's like eights to nines every games, and who knows if they're getting hard matchups or not. But like to just if you get a zero, it's so hard to come back as a team from that. Like if you don't have like the greatest players in the world on the top end, and at the same time, I think there is something to be said on the top end people where. You know, it's one thing to go and score a lot of points, but you have to be able to compete with their top people, right? And not, you don't have to be able to crush them. You don't have to go out there and crush Furion or anything. But, you know, if you go into a pairing and you just keep putting your best player versus their weakest player, I, I, I'll give you a great example. If you just, if you have a team with one really good player and then like a bunch of like mediocre ones, and the other team knows this, they'll just potentially put their weakest player versus your best player. Say, all right, get your five, get your 15 points, whatever you're going to get. Our guy sucks anyway. He's not that good. And then just crush all your other teammates, right? Whereas opposed to, I don't think that strategy is amazing 
all the time. Like, right, if you think of a USA team and you go up against Germany and you, Thomas is over there, I don't think you can just wave your hand and say, all right, Thomas, you're going to get a 17 plus and we're going to hope to crush the rest of your guys. I think having people on the team that can like go up against them and say, all right, I might, I might beat you. And I might not, you know, I've played Thomas enough to say that he's better than I am, but Hey, any given day, I think I can compete with them. And I think you need that from every, you know, most of your players to be able to compete with these top guys and say, all right, you know, I have a chance. And that's how you, you know, that's the winner's attitude. The, you know, I just want to survive attitude and maybe, you know, not get capped. That's not the attitude I want to go in with. Nonetheless, that's a long, <laughs> that's a long story to get us to where we are now in this video, which is essentially, you know, as we practice and go through, we have to pick armies. And I am not 100% set on being a Warriors player for ETC of next year, to be fair. Um, I think this video is it's kind of like a pre-video, and then there will be like a video after the, the changes to the books come out. Because this is more to just get my like general thoughts, and then after the points changes, I'll probably have a lot more opinions on what I want to play. Um, the reason I say I don't, I'm not 100% sold on Warriors now is, one, I don't know what the changes are going to be. Two, I've just had fun exploring other things. And, you know, I'm kind of... I, I it's When you're playing something and you're playing the Herald and the Double Elder list and you're like, oh, this is fun and, you know, ha-ha, you, know, you guys can't stop the... You know, it's too strong of an army. The book is too strong. And then when you kind of back off of it and you play something else... Um, and not that I think orcs are bad, I think they're good, and not that I think warriors are so overpowered that it like makes me sick, but it's just kind of like, I just look and I'm like, Ugh. I've watched other people play with double elders and stuff, and um, I don't know, sometimes I see some of the reward for playing it, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is it seems sometimes too easy, but it's not, I don't know, it's just like, a, it's a noob crusher. And so I guess when I feel see two like okay players play against each other with the when one has warriors, it feel, I feel just bad for the other person a lot of the time. Now in top level games, it's a lot closer and stuff, and it's still a super strong book and whatnot. I don't know. I've just I feel like you you play something and then you like there's some armies on this list I just hate. Like I just don't like to pull. I just don't like them that much. Um, and maybe it's the play style. Maybe it's just my experience against them that kind of makes me be like, ew, I don't want to be that guy. Like, I don't want to be the guy that has a dwarf shooting list in the corner. Um, but maybe I could be that guy. Who knows? Um, but anyway, what this is, is I'm trying to kind of say, in the next year we have for ETC, I've played a ton of Warriors, so there's, there's no doubt that in the next eight months I'm going to be playing more Warriors when the points change come out and whatnot. Um, and at least, at the very least, I'll help whoever's playing Warriors on, if her, if we take the Warriors on the team, I'll probably be involved in helping them um, with their list and play style. And I think that's good. I think, you know, if you have 20 guys and you have a good coverage of all the armies, um, they can help each other and, and grow. And it's kind of nice to have some people, even if you're not an expert on the army, but just play with something and be like, oh, that didn't feel good or that felt good, especially if they're all good players, right? Like I can... I can play 10 high elf games and I'm not going to be a high elf expert, but I can be like, oh, I can, you know, you kind of get a sense of what feels good, what doesn't feel good. It also gives you the opportunity to kind of feel what, what weaknesses and strengths might be out there for, for different armies. I think when it comes to list build, I think even sometimes as simply as building multiple lists for different armies, you kind of get a sense of like, oh, maybe this isn't, oh, that's more of a, metagame is this army broken or whatnot and not as much how to play it but i don't know sometimes you you realize that it's hard to fit certain things in armies when you actually have to build the list but um i think on the board you know when it comes to maybe vs or like orcs or just things that i mean they're both strong but i don't know you kind of get a feel of like oh this is this is actually very difficult for them uh, koe is a, probably a good example right like koe might suffer if you can get around them to their flanks because they don't They'll never catch you again, right? Because you're next to them and they, you can just... They turn and then you move. 
Um, and maybe they have leadership issues in the bubble because they're knights, you know, you don't want to fail that steadfast check or that panic check when you're outside your general and BSB. So, you know, that might be a weakness of KOE that you might not realize unless you really think about our ask KOE players until you, you play them and realize, oh shit, like if this guy just walks next to me, I'm fucked. And then, but maybe you never did that in your play style. And that's a pretty easy example or something. But, you know, there's little things like that where they're like, if this opponent just did this to me, I'd be screwed. And the opponent doesn't do it because they don't know it's a weakness for you per se. So there is a lot of value in that, <clears throat> I think, when either when playing with other armies a little bit. It's just to kind of get a sense of, you know, what is what, what don't they want to do? Maybe they don't want to go out of the bubble, so you can position your strategy around the fact of or or like knowing that helps you in a lot of matchups right I, I, you know i think people maybe put things at max charge range out of charge range when you can put it within a couple inches and say they're not going to charge me they're not going to charge me because they can't they, if they charge here they're going to be out of their general's range, out of their BSV range, and they're not going to have their magic. Like that little thing, or they don't want to be that far away because they need it for this. So, I don't know. The point we're trying to get to is I, quote unquote, need to, or want to, probably pick one more army to play with. And it probably is not going to be a high chance I play it for the ETC team. It's probably one of those ones where... If I'm playing a lot of practice games, I can kind of switch to it and give my teammates practice and kind of help whoever, either test armies for that list or, you know, test ideas and just give practice. So, you know, I play Travis in person every like two weeks or so. And, you know, we can only play so many games before we're doing, you know, we did Warriors versus Demons like a ton of times. So it'd be nice to have two or three lists where, you know, if he has two or three, now we have, you know, six possible or five, whatever many possible matchups we have to test and not just demons versus warriors. So we're going to look at the armies. I'm going to make some commentary on if I'm interested in them in not, or not. And this could, you know, who knows in, when the points change how this will look. But this is kind of my initial look. So... I guess we could say already play is here, right? Already play. And you know, I, I have different reasons for being interested and not interested in lists, and I'll and I'll try to explain why I think of things. So the clear one is, is Warriors of the Dark Gods. I already play them. Um I Yeah, I'm probably the best one in the in on the team with them, I'd say. Or in the group with them currently uh but who knows what the points changes what 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 kind of style is going to take be prevalent and um but they'll always be there i mean i played 100 games on them i own the army at the very least i will play them as practice and 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 whatnot so that's the easiest one to get away um uh we all know i've currently started playing orcs so I'm still only like 10 or 12 games in, I think. I'm going to be playing them in a couple of tournaments and um, online events. I, I am definitely... Orcs are one of the armies when the new points changes come out, besides Warriors, that I will look to first and see if it sparks anything. Um, I'm definitely looking to see if Orcs get a lot better in the points changes. We all know Warriors are going to get nerfed. Like, No one's going to be shocked when Feldrakes go up and blah, blah, blah. So, Orcs are one of those ones where I know the data says they're kind of powerful, but, it, like, I don't know, it's like a middling thing where, you know, is some things going to get better, and they have so many cool things in their book that I don't feel like they're just going to be ruined by the points or, or super buffed, but I, I do think that the meta could heavily um, help or hurt them, depending on, you know, if spells get changed or, you know, if single models start falling out of favor does that help or hurt orcs do they have the tools to kind of play a more rank and file game sure they probably do um so as far as exploration goes i think orcs are are, are really high up there um let's see so i think and remember this is like 
<clears throat> when I'm making this list, I would say this is a ETC potential for me. And it has nothing to do with, well, I mean, some of it has to do with strength of armies. Um, that's for sure. But some of it has to do with what is like, is there any chance that I actually play them for it? And I know for like maybe my third or fourth army, it's not really about, am I going to take it to ETC? But there is kind of like, does it do anything for the team and stuff? So like, like DL, right? If you asked me, no ETC, I don't know anybody else. Would I like playing DL? I probably would like playing DL. Um, but we have a lot of demon players out there. Like everybody has like a pocket demons, it seems like. If I needed to pick them up for like a practice game, sure, I can make a list and, and play them. And I'm sure I can do fine with them. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see how they change for sure. But I really don't have any interest of like pursuing DL um, intensely. I, I get enough games with Travis and others playing DL that it's it's very it'd be wasted if i if i played a lot of dl games i'd say um vc uh, probably no interest as well uh, i think this is kind of a kind of a holdover or something where i don't know chris has been playing vc for a long time you know if he makes the cut this year if he plays enough and resolves, he'll be the VC player. It's very unlikely that I try to take that from him or push him off of it, right? If you're thinking of just the interest of the team, if you believe that Chris is one of the, the top eight, and obviously we haven't gone that far yet, no one's no one's guaranteed, and, and I think it should be that way. We didn't have ATC this year. You know, we can't always rest on past laurels, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, in a world where if I believe Chris will make the top eight or, or could, it's probably going to be with VC. And so what's, what, does, what do I gain by pushing him off of it, right? Let's say I played VC and, and was better than him. Let's just, right? So now I take a guy who performs well at ETC off the best army, and then you really don't want to, maybe you want to push him to another one, but, you know, it's just kind of, what's the point of it? Just so, I, and I don't play them. It's not like I've come in here being the best, v, you know what I mean? I have to work, to, I might as well put that effort towards another army. Um, so that's, that's, that's probably a reason for that. Uh, dwarves, I'm not interested in. There's a cool, I mean, the MSU style, is not, it's just not my thing. I, I, would I like to maybe play a game or two with MSU Dwarves just to get a feel for them and, from the other side? Maybe. Um, but I doubt I'll play this kind of crap. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like the shooting Dwarves. I, they're boring. I don't even think they're that good for ETC purposes. Like, Dwarves aren't high on my list to take as an ETC team, ETC army. Um, at least for me. So, not interested. Uh, is there anything else I'm just absolutely not interested in? UD. I'm not interested in UD. Uh, just, I mean, I don't know. They got kind of nerfed. Maybe they'll get buffed. I don't know. I don't know if the style really suits what I want to do. It, it's just very unlikely that I have any reason to pick them up. Um... Let's see what else. Let's just so okay. So these are a weird one for me because I I still think I would really enjoy ogres, and I think it would suit me very well how they play. We'll see how they get buffed or nerfed in the upcoming um, patches. But I I feel like I'll put low for this. I could definitely see myself playing Ogre games and maybe trying to help whoever's the Ogre player, but I feel like we have a decent bit of people who play Ogres where, again, what is the point of me using them, per se? I don't know. It, it That's one where, like, it's a high interest in a bubble, kind of like Demons, but very low interest from an ETC perspective, I'd say. Um. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see what else. Uh, I would say Saurians is the no. Probably no interest in Saurians. Um, we have some people that play them. 
not very well camps, but I just don't think they'll fit what I want to do in my play style. Again, I can like they're an, they're an army like there's only a couple armies on this list that I could absolutely not see myself playing. Just I wouldn't like it. Like sure, from an interesting perspective, I'd like to try SA, I guess, but I would never focus like thirty games on it. So that's a no interest one. KOE, hmm. I'm going to put it as low, I think. So KOE for me is, is twofold. I have kind of a low interest in playing it from a, I don't love, like, I think they're very, very good in team events. But I think I just have this, like, hatred versus them because I'm, I'm annoyed by them a lot. I think they're annoying to play against. Um... I don't have a ton of respect for KOE players all the time, to be fair. Maybe it's harder than it looks, but it just feels like if they're in a good matchup, it's kind of like killing it, kill people, but I don't know. I'm going to wait for KOE, see where other things lie. I'm not a huge, like I like them if you have a really good player on them. They just don't. I just I, every time I imagine myself just playing with a bunch of knights, I kind of get like annoyed. I don't know why. They're they're one that kind of like it's my heart more than my head. Uh, I'd say ID is low interest, more so than no interest, especially if they kind of get fighty and cool. If that becomes a style, but the book's in kind of a flux, and I feel like it would take you know a more finalized book. And then I kind of look at it and say, oh, you know, it fights and shoots a little bit. Maybe it has everything I want, but I respect, you know, I think that book got a lot of flack when it first came out for all the ridiculous shit it had and deservingly so. And now I kind of like look at it funny. I'm not interested. I'd s okay, Dark Elves. I'll put a high interest for Dark Elves. So Dark Elves are getting a new book. Um, and so... They're always going to be a little, you know, I played Dark Elf several years at ETC long ago, but I always like the style. It's kind of like that mix of aggro, but you have the shooting and the fast movement to kind of make, I just like that kind of shit and kind of miss it now. Um, I almost played Dark Elf when I came back to the game, but people told me the book was changing and that it wasn't the greatest book. And so I stayed off of them. Given that it's a new book and it's coming out, should be coming out in time for ETC, I'll put it on the high interest list. That one is, you know, after I see it and stuff like that, I'll have more of an opinion. Um, but, I mean, it's obviously going to be up there as a, since it's an army I like and a new book. Huh. VS are probably low. I don't know if they're getting a new book or not. I don't know. I've heard that it might come out in time. I've heard it might not. The fact that they're in flux is kind of like, meh, to me. They're probably more than no interest, at least. Sorry, Thomas. Um, I do like like the, the, the Greater Demon style. Again, who knows what they're going to look like after the points adjustments. So, um, I'm definitely more excited for points adjustments this year. Because I know a lot more about all the armies and like what's good and what works and stuff. So I can actually see a little bit more of the meta changes when I look at the points adjustments. Last year I was just like, how much are my warriors getting nerfed? And all I knew was warriors at the time. Um, hmm. I guess these two columns really aren't like... I'm going to just label this interest. Some, some interest. Because it's really not high. It's not like I'm super high interested in these lists. Um, uh, Sylvan Elves. Probably low. I think there's some strong builds out there. I've watched... I've had two teammates that have played the, like, tree shooty list. Um, and I've seen a lot of people play that nowadays. Hey. It's either that list is just not as good as I think it is, or people just suck with it. I don't know. I've just I've been less impressed with the results of it and watching people play it, but it always feels like it should be better. 
So, you know, sometimes you sit there and be like, oh, I could do it better. Um, you know, maybe, maybe that's right or wrong, but I don't know if it really is up there on my, like, oh, this is going to be, this is what I want. Um, it's probably not something I really want to play. Hmm. We're running out of things. Uh, high elves are going to go to low. I like them. They're strong. But we have... This one's probably low because we have enough people who... Again, what's the chance that I am the high elf player? If we have someone like Bergie on the team. Bergie might like ID, but... It's kind of like, what's the point of me playing high elves? Bergie plays them. Travis plays them. So why why would I play them? I just don't have a great reason to play them right now. Um, I guess I added a column. These three. EOS, Empire. Interesting one. Not a mayor any Americans play them. Some do. Obviously, we have some people on the team. I know Ben Mitchell's testing them, and Jolo plays them. They do seem very strong. The Conrad style list is very nice. Mixed arms, cowboys, shooting, some tough units. Uh, a lot of little tricks in it. And they might get buffed in the new patch, or at least some of their models. I, I do think I could see some of their stuff getting hit a little bit. Maybe the maybe the Rangers go up slightly just because of how many shots they put out for so little points. But I'm going to put it in the sum interest because it kind of fits in that not many, not a ton of people play them. And they do have a lot of cool tricks. And maybe it'd be in, they might be getting more popular, so there might be a use of it being like a third level army to play. Hmm. I kind of want to, okay, so what, I, what I'm thinking right now is we have two armies left Beast Herds and KOE, and I want to put one into some interest and one into low interest, or both in the sum. I do want at least one more in some interest. Um, mm, I just I, I feel like my heart says fuck KOE like my heart just is like even it doesn't matter if I think I'd be good on it or I think we need people to test it I just don't love them like I'm just imagining myself playing them and even if I'm winning and just feeling like guilty about it for some reason. I for some reason I didn't feel guilty playing warriors, but I'd feel guilty playing KOE. I don't know. I just I just have like a weird disdain for them. Not like the same hatred I have towards like dwarves, but just or like shooting armies, but just like this weird like meh fucking knights. Just make your ward saves and win type shit. But at the same time beast herds like I don't know. It's funny because they're also another army where, like, the, the aggressive... MS, MS, this is the aggressive style of, like, they don't shoot, they ambush, their movement, their combat. Like, that, that, that seems like, oh, shit, you know, that's my style. That should, that should grab my attention. But at the same time, it doesn't. Uh, but we don't have many Beasters players. Well, we have... Like, like it, again, I don't think either of these two armies would be the one I end up on. If I really wanted to, I guess I could see myself playing either one. I don't know. I think in the real world, which one would I be more likely to actually play? If I was practicing. You know what? We're going to put them both. In some interest. Just to fill this category out. So what this kind of says is. In the next. 
eight months or nine months before ETC, there's a good chance I play a lot of both of these armies. Unless something really weird happens. There is very little chance that I play any of these armies. Other than maybe a pickup game, practice game. Um, you know, I want to test versus this list. Let me pull out a Sorry Ancients list that I copy a good player's list and just play it. Um, but don't really take seriously. So these are more of a, I'll play you with Versit if you need me to. But I'm not that interested in going any further with that. And these are kind of that middle ground of like, let's see what the updates do. Maybe I give it more of a shot to actually play five games with these lists and say, all right, let me let me get a feel for how they play. Like, especially like maybe KOEs on this because it would be interesting to play them maybe five games and just say, I guess they're one that I haven't, I have a lot, of, I have trouble verse. And so maybe seeing it from the other side would give me some insights that would be interesting or like, you know, playing KOE versus Thomas and seeing what Thomas does versus me and being like, oh shit, you know, that's a weakness I can exploit. Um, so there is very, there's just some interest there on that. And they're not the most popular army. Um, in the meta, our meta, so that has some use. It's not like there's eight other people that play them. Um, Beast Herds, yeah. Empire is kind of like, let's see what the new book says, or the new changes say, and I know we got some people testing Conrad's list, but, you know, who knows? Who knows what will happen? So, yeah, that's just a my thought process. I, I could say if I make the team next year, 90% chance I am playing one of these two. 90% chance. And I actually think the Orcs have a better chance than people think. People think I'm 100% would try out for Warriors. I actually think there's a good chance I would consider playing Orcs. Um, depending on the points updates and how I do over the next couple of months playing them. Uh, Warriors kind of... Yeah. Yeah. It just depends. But, you know, I'm not going to... I'm not picking an army... I'll put it... There's two. I'm picking an army semi-based on the people I think are, I want on the team based on skill. But I'm not picking an army because I'm scared of anybody beating me out for an army. <laughs> Does that make sense? I think whatever army I choose, if I'll... I'll probably get it, <laughs> to be fair, if I want it. Unless I just suck for the next eight months. But I, in my head, I'm, I'll put it this way. I'm confident enough that if I choose an army and do what I can do with it, I'll make the team with that army. So if there's eight people going for the same army, and I, I'll pick it because if I want it, as opposed to what I might suggest to people who are looking to make it, like, if you were in Poland looking to make the ETC team, I would tell you, do not play High Elves. Because if Furion's playing High Elves, you're not going to make it. He's going to get on the team over you. So you need to pick something that maybe has one of the weaker players playing it or isn't as played as much and maybe could be exposed. So that's, that's kind of like my suggestion, even in, in anything, right? That's the whole thing with Mince. Um, like, why do not, not a lot of the ETC guys play VC? Because he's kind of been around a while, and I don't know. I think it's twofold. Like I said, it's do you want to put in the time to try to compete with somebody who's been to many ETCs on VC, and assuming he's still one of the eight best, <clears throat> you want him on his best tool. That's kind of right, right. If he, if you believe he's gonna make it, and he's one of the eight best on it, then don't take away his best tool. Learn something else. And at the same time, if you really want to make the team. Do you want to take the chance, if you think he's better than you, do you want to take the chance that he, you know, you're the second best VC player and they pick the other one and then you're stuck because all you are is a good VC player, but they already have one. So that's like a real thing too. So there is a little bit of gamesmanship, right? Where depending on where you think you are or, or what's out there, where you might be best playing something someone else isn't interested in. Um, and I think keeping multiple armies in interest is, especially this far out, 
is uh, is fine because at the end of the day, like I said, I don't want people switching. But you know, if you decide in February or March what your army is, assuming you're going to get another 50, 60 games on it, that's fine. Because um, you're going to assume you're playing multiple armies right now, getting multiple games on it, and then when you finally focus, you know, several months out, you've already still had like thirty or forty games on them, and now you're getting another forty to fifty games in between then and now for practice what more i was trying to avoid is oh you know two people really stand out on warriors and orcs and i go hey guys i still want to be on the team take me anyway and i'll play one of these other ones and then you know it's 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 you know april and i'm like well i guess i'll buy an empire army off ebay and then i only get 25 games 30 games with it in and i'm like 80 percent ready for etc and it's just not enough um i don't like that but anyway, that's my sh video, just kind of a, just talking. Thanks.